very happy to be here. I've just been in Croatia. Well, I have this Brazilian accent, so I apologize in advance. <clears throat> and you ask questions if you don't understand. <clears throat> Uh, I'm just loving Crusher. It's my first time because the only time that I've been here was after the earthquake, so I couldn't get into the city. I'm, I'm just loving. So thanks for bringing me down. Um, I actually choose a topic, although I've been talking about distributed leadership and culture and organizations for a long time. I, I actually wanted to talk uh, about something that it's very alive in me right now that is personal leadership that is actually how can each one of us has autonomy and actually um, intentionally design our lives because i think we can talk about the community but the individual in the community and how we behave it's super important as well and i also will talk a little bit about what is changing in the workplace and why? Because I think it's related. So a lot of networks comes also because there is a lot of change in the workplace as well. So just talking a little bit about personal leadership and how it relates. So just a little bit about my story. I've been working with innovation all my life. I started one of the first digital agencies in Brazil. I sold it to a big advertising agency. Then I had a personal situation. My partner had a diagnosis of a cancer. I was pregnant of my first baby. And it took us four months to find out that the diagnosis was wrong. So he didn't have cancer. But that was the beginning of a huge personal transformation. At that time, I had 250 employees in five different countries, was super like traveling around the world, creating the future, and life gave me a present of very early in my life, be able to start questioning, asking bigger questions in my life, like what I would do if I had two years to live. So one of the things that we've done was, it was his dream. We, we lived aboard a sailboat for six years in different voyages, first with one daughter, then with two daughters. That was actually a very deep personal transformation to get in contact with who I am and what moves me. And, and then I, during this journey, I went into education. So we, we ended up in a small village by the coast in Brazil. So we, there was no education. So that was when we started with community. So we co-founded the Steiner School in Brazil that now has 13 years and was designed not to have bosses, to be completely distributed uh, leadership and designed for social inclusion. So 50% of the students pay and 50 doesn't pay with all the challenges related because we don't have any government support in Brazil. So it's been going on for 13 years now and that's when I started to become a facilitator and to understand that there are other ways of uh, working inside communities. And funny enough, the company that I saw that was super successful after I left, they bought two other companies and never again they were in that position. And the school, we left nine years ago. And the school, last year, the community built a new building because we didn't have a building. The 120 families built and we have left nine years ago. And the school is still there. So for me, it was a huge uh, looking at those two examples and which one is resilient. It was a huge learning. So. After that, I joined Inspire when I met Billy as well. And that was also for me the beginning of how can we actually choose a tribe and learn how to be in community that is not only physical in the same space. So there are other kinds of communities right now. And I think as we go, uh, as we work with networks around the world, it changes completely what it means to work and to create culture. And I was actually, um, able to support the Edmund Hillary Fellowship here in New Zealand and help uh, choose some of the fellows and host some of the welcome weeks and welcome some of the fellows. And that was a very profound experience for me to have the Maori culture framing and to have like staying together for five days to build the culture so then we can work remotely in a networked way. So that was another very important um, experience that shaped the way I look at the work. And now I've been 
actually I have my business called Future You to help individuals and teams navigate this future with intentionally designing their work and their lives. So just a little bit about why, a little bit about what I see. I've been working remotely since 2005, and today I work remotely with Brazil in a daily basis and go there every three months. I've been doing this for six years. And uh, I'm also one of the companies that I structure in Brazil was actually gave me this experience of working a very short period of time to prototype solutions for complex problems in five days. And I see it's also very related to networks and new ways of working because people can be together for a short period of time, create something meaningful, and then go again to other places. So that was also an experience that made me understand what is happening. Inspiral gave me this understanding of belonging to a community with no borders. And this is one of our meetings. We are together there, and really, it's been a while. And this is one of our meetings, members' meetings, that we have every two months. So who is in the same place joins in the same office, or who is online join online. And we create our culture. We check in with each other. We see how we are. And we wrote this book together that you can see here. And that's what I've been doing right now. <laughs> I'm just telling this story because I can see for the past 16 years, the future of work is uh, one of my main topics. And I can see the change that we are facing right now. We have a whole generation searching for meaning. It's not only the millennials anymore, everyone. It's all, so this is a couple that lives in a farm in Brazil. They were one of the most innovative couples. They work in amazing projects around the world and they live in this farm because it's their choice and because they wanted flexibility. So they keep working the biggest projects in New York, in Brazil, all over the world from the farm and getting together uh, for specific projects. We have a situation where the engagement is very low. In average in the world, this is an information from Gallup, only 80, uh, only 13 percent of the employees are engaged. All the others are in different levels of disengagement. In New Zealand and Australia, it's better than the rest of the world, even though it's just 24 percent of engagement. So, and then we have all the changes in technology. I won't go into that space, but we all know that everything is changing very quickly. We have automation. I, I won't go into that direction because that's not the case. But what I wanted to say is, and we are even living more and more. So technology is also enabling us to live more. So they say that the ones who will live 150 years have already been born. So we have, this is happening right now, this kind of a context where we are. And so what, is, what I can see around the world in the projects that I've been working with, with organizations and with individuals, actually, it's getting more and more horizontal. And the companies of the future will be more and more human and horizontal. So that's all over in different levels of maturity. Some companies are ready for them. The others are like, what am I going to do with this? But this is happening all over the world. And that means, like Billy said, that means um, constant learning, learning culture, more creativity, more co-creation, more quality of life, less difference between what is a person and professional. That means more entrepreneurial, more collaborative, all sorts of things. But I was just wanted to bring the attention to one concept like what is one thing that we could do? Because it can be quite complex, quite overwhelming. And people say, oh my God, I will change the whole structure of the company. So now it needs to be horizontal and no hierarchy. And there is one thing that is actually, nobody needs permission to actually adopt in some practice, like how you run a meeting. You don't need to change the whole structure of the company. But if you could start practicing more horizontal ways of doing things, or if you could have a more horizontal culture without changing the whole thing, this is actually one step you can take. And that goes to what you can do as an individual. And I have five things that I've been observing as personal leadership. 
actually. It's actually, how can we own our future and not wait for another person to change the company or HR to say to us what we need to learn. So actually, I just came from the United States where I had the opportunity of do this certification. And I found out this is from Stanford. The number one course in Stanford is nothing related to engineering, nothing related to technology. The number one course there nowadays is called Design Your Life. Because every person that would finish college, they didn't know what is their next steps. So they developed these tools to help people navigate and design intentionally their life and work. So, and I was very surprised to see companies like, lots of companies actually using those tools so that the employees could choose their future inside the company without needing to leave. So that's happening right now. The, the other thing like Billy said about purpose, I've been helping lots of people find what is meaningful for them. And companies actually share, allow, create space for people to find what is meaningful for them. Because if there is coherence between who I am, what I believe, and what I do, I'm happy. If not, I'm not happy. And actually, I've been helping lots of companies. In this book, I share a story, and Better Work Together, I share a story of a company that we've done uh, 18 purpose rituals in, this, in the company, how to connect my individual purpose with my collective purpose, because that's one of the most important things. And another thing that I've been observing is, you don't need to change your whole life. You don't need to do what I've done, like, okay, Let's quit the big corporate job and go sailing around the world. It's just like we, we can pay attention to what gives us energy and engagement. And actually, by looking at those activities, we can actually adjust and do more of and what energizes us and less of what doesn't energize us. This is one of the favorite tools that people love in, in the program that I run, that is actually logging, do a logbook of their activities. And after two weeks, you are able to actually see every time that I, I, I experienced that looking at my activities and every time that I did a strategy work, I was full of energy. I love strategy. And I had stopped doing strategy for years. I don't know why. So I put more strategy in my work and less of this stuff that I don't like. I don't need to change the whole thing. But if I am aware of the things that I like and I can choose more of those, that's also something important. And one thing that is making a huge difference, it's lifelong learning. It's actually the attitude of learning all the time. We used to have the time of here I study, here I work, eventually I do a, a master or whatever. Now we can separate life and work. We need to actually have the mindset that how can I transform work and life and learn all the time. So this is a workshop we've done in, war, uh, in Auckland two months ago. It's called Lifelong Learning Lab, where people see they develop their plan and actually have experience with their peers of sharing their challenge. I don't know how to solve this. Can you help me? And really um, finding ways to learn from work. And the last one is actually find your tribe, I think. Uh, inspired with the, the tribe that I found here in New Zealand. And I think it's my place of personal, professional development and my place of experimentation where I have the trust to actually try new things. Because if you go to other ways of working, you still need to, how can you grow prof professionally or personally? So if you don't have those structures, you need to find other structures that will give you that space. So uh, eventually community <coughs> is a place where you can find peers, you can grow and you can learn more uh, if you don't have the formal structures anymore. This is us in one of this, our retreats mm -hmm. in March. So that's our space of sharing and learning. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.